Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman has always been, or at least was supposed to be, an enduring icon of freedom. He is a statuesque outsider from another world who, regardless of a time or place, believes in an undiluted heroism. Oh, Superman, you're terrific. Yeah, I know. This seems like something that wouldn't be that hard to turn into a movie. However, there have been numerous attempts to bring this four-color pop culture sensation that have failed to capture the public's imagination. But there's a large group of people that believe that this changed when the CW-verse saved Superman. The world we live in today is a dark morass of conflicting ideologies and overstimulation. This mythical creation serves as a reminder that we must always rise and embrace the best of us. That ideal is not necessarily lost to a bygone era, but rather something that we must nurture and grow as a global culture. At least that's what the people that create around and with Superman, the IP, believe. Created in 1939, Clark Kent, also known as the last son of Krypton, skyrocketed to financial and cultural import through the pages of DC Comics Action Comics number one. Over his 80 year history, Superman has meant many things to many people. In the 1950s, he was repositioned by DC editor Mort Weisinger as America's dad. In the 80s, he was rebooted by writer and artist John Byrne as a Reagan-esque signifier of family values. And in the 2010s, thanks to some failed movie adaptations, well, he got dark. After a few troubled cinematic outings and the long-running Smallville show came to a close, the prospect of rebooting Superman for a new era became a priority for Warner Brothers. They had been attempting to find a vehicle for the character since the train wreck that was Superman for the quest for peace. Since then, Kevin Smith, J.J. Abrams, Tim Burton, and Brett Ratner all attempted to reboot the character to varying levels of failure. However, in 2011, the burgeoning DC Cinematic Universe was underway. Zack Snyder, director of iconic films such as 300 and Dawn of the Dead, was tasked with bringing the character to life and refreshing him for a modern audience. Warner Brothers had not been satisfied by the recent attempt mounted by Brian Singer. And I guess there, the less we say, the better. Singer's Superman Returns is still a somber, nostalgic view of Superman, shot through the lens of attempting to recapture the Richard Donner heights of success from the 1970s. Critics, however, were confused by the morally conflicted depiction of Superman and clamored for more action. They felt giving him a kid out of wedlock pushed the character to the breaking point of familial absurdity. Snyder's version of Superman would embrace this idea but push the character a little bit sideways. Snyder's Superman is defined by grit. This was his way of attempting to root the character in something that modern audiences could relate to, at least that's what he believed. Snyder's Man of Steel showcased a conflicted and morally gray Superman in a completely different way than Singer. This is a Superman who's attempting to find his way in the world, he's attempting to learn right from wrong. Snyder and company's film climaxes in a scene where he commits murder in the name of saving the lives of the innocent, which is, well, not a very Superman thing to do. One of those ultimate goal with Superman was to position the character at the center of cultural discourse in a way that he had not been for the last 20 years, with both Singer and Snyder. However, both of these attempts at bringing a darkness and grittiness to the character failed to strike a chord with audiences because it's just simply not who Superman is from a thousand foot up superficial view of the character's history. On a bone deep level, Superman is kind of a bright, sunny, jubilant character. That's not to say he can't have moments of gravitas, dourness, or even darkness, but he as a character was always meant and always written as a positive force for good. And altering that too much just causes the fictional world around him to crumble. In a modern cinematic landscape that sounds scary, how do you make an Oscar winning film about a guy who's smiling? Well, how do you crack the conundrum of creating a man compelling enough that isn't externally conflicted in the same ways a character might be internally conflicted? Well, as mentioned from the top, there's a large group of people that believe the CW figured it out. This man right here first started playing The Last Son of Krypton on the television show Supergirl after first appearing on CBS for a single season. Supergirl moved to the CW and was fully incorporated into the shared superhero universe, spearheaded by maker producer Greg Berlanti. When it came time for Kal-El to have his own spin-off in patented CW verse style, writer-producer Todd Helbing was brought in to oversee the reconstruction of the beloved grandfather of all superheroes. Debuting on February 23rd, 2021, the initial episode of what has been named Superman and Lois recontextualizes the character for modern audiences, maybe perfectly. The Superman that had appeared throughout the CW-verse as a somewhat Fidelitas interpretation of the Big Blue Boy Scout was here and finally coming into his own. Not as a supporting character, but as the lead. 
right here in this pilot. The cold open of Superman and Lois is a perfect representation of everything that is good about the character. This simple five minute story, mostly told through voiceover and slow motion imagery, gets to the bottom of what makes Superman a character that every American instantly recognizes. Even if you've never seen anything Superman before this snippet of narrative, you still get everything you need to know. It's both a perfect introduction and a wonderful short story. Rapid shots of a rocket plummeting into Earth, shots of a baby in a hibernation chamber, Kansas cornfields, a crash landing, an infant, it's all right there, ripped straight from the pages of All-Star Superman's opening. But words don't really express what this cold open does in totality. Hearing the voices of my parents. The sound design gives you an instant emotional landscape to engage with. The cinematography is better than anything the CW verse has seen before. The sweeping violins, the crane shots of the Kent farm. There's more heart, earnestness, and love in these few moments than there is in the last few attempts at making Superman work on a larger screen. The celebration of the strengths of small town life and the pure goodness of Clark Kent, the man from the stars. There's a moment with a little boy who says, cool costume, to which Clark responds, Thanks, my mom made it for me. That's Superman, not some frowning, angry alien being. The fact that this moment is taken almost directly from Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's Superman for All Seasons is evidence that Helbing and his crew completely get the character. It's exactly the moment you want in an adaptation of The Man of Steel in order to immediately communicate who the person is that's wielding this ungodly might. Superman's true power isn't being able to leap a building in a single bound or run faster than a locomotive, it's remembering his past. It's the fact that he's a good person. That's what makes him the best of us. Even though he's not one of us, an alien from a faraway planet, he's so good and pure of intention that he's able to hold up a mirror and reflect who we should be or want to be. Superman's true power is his kindness, and any adaptation that forgets that isn't really doing Superman justice. This inherent truth is the main thing that most big screen adaptations of Superman overlook. In a world fueled by commercial viability and four quadrant ratings, it's increasingly difficult to place emphasis on non-conflict oriented character based motivations. Audiences both domestic and international want to see action and destruction, whereas a character like Superman functions in literal opposition to that at its core, or his core. Sure, there are fight scenes, but he's not a character rooted in violence, destruction, or darkness. He exists as a beacon. And this is the true genius of what the CW did with this character and many of the other characters they're currently dealing with. They even gave Superman twins. That's right, they made him a father with responsibilities. A core aspect of the character's narrative struggle for so long was keeping his identity a secret from Lois and the rest of the supporting characters. However, now that his two sons are in the picture, he has to reckon with the decisions and choices he's made while raising them and balance that with being Superman, all without it turning into a horrible, dark, black hole. In many ways, this brings a fresh new dramatic tension that Warner's been searching for. They've been attempting to work out how to update the character for close to two decades. It appears as though, to many, they might have figured it out, and in some ways, they might have found it in 1950s idealism of the American father. After many failed attempts at updating him, it came down to just looking back at what made Superman Superman from the very beginning. The CW provided a way to showcase that very thing organically and allowing Superman to deal with conflict just as much as he becomes conflict. And that's probably a good lesson for every superhero movie. Yes, we all want nuanced heroes. We all want moral greys. We all want internal struggle. But at the end of the day, if that internal or external struggle strips away everything that made that person's internal caricature what it was to begin with, then you're not creating internal conflict. You're rewriting the person altogether. You're creating someone else. Man of Steel becomes the title because Superman is no longer there. In art, you hear the term trust your gut all the time. So that's the lesson here. Trust your gut. Know yourself, know your character, and build from there. Characters evolve. Evolution is key. Revolution is where everything falls off the rails. Well guys, that's it for today's episode of Nostalgic. If you enjoyed this one, press the like button down below. If you haven't yet done so, also hit subscribe. And on your screen right now, as usual, hopefully are two more videos, so you can click on either of those. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.